Today I'm continuing the construction of my castle in the sky adventure map. Today I want to show you a trick to make custom objects so that you can really speed up your build times when you're duplicating large objects. You can see in the background some of my work, but I'm going to show you how I got there in building the different walls, the turrets, etc. I think a really important key when you're building adventure maps is the wow factor. And that's what I'm building here is a giant castle when people drop into the map they say, Wow. And if it has that wow factor, it also brings more content creators in to play it because they're saying, whoa, this looks amazing. So it's important to spend time on the details of your adventure map and making it look cool. You don't want people jumping in thinking it's gonna be something really cool and epic and be underwhelmed with your design. I've done that a lot jumping into adventure maps. And so it's important to spend time making it look cool. So my tips today are gonna help you uh, build really cool looking things, but it's not gonna take so so much of your time that you're just going crazy. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, first things first, guys. I think we need to build out our walls, and I want them to look a little bit nicer than just, you know, a plain wall. I think this is the uh, base wall that I want uh, right here. So let's first, let's size this up to be, you know, how big we want it to be. Okay, so that's basically the size I want it. Now let's make this look a little bit prettier. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna overlap walls. So what happens is when you overlap, um, it starts to make it look a lot cooler. So what I want to do is grab this arch and I'm gonna size this up So it's the same size as this wall. Okay, so you kind of see what I'm doing here Is this with this overlapping feature and now I'm starting to get this little bit of a curve going on on the wall Now I want to put two more doors in the interior so that it looks like a really cool design Okay, this is starting to take shape a little bit. It's starting to look pretty cool um, I definitely want to like fill in these gaps that are up above and, and below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my original wall here and make it flush with corners. And then I'm gonna duplicate this process on each of the corners so that you know all of these gaps are filled in and it looks like a nice cool, um, you know, unique wall that no one else has done before. Okay, so this looks pretty cool, but I'm worried about this little gap here. I wanna kinda of fill this in with something. I found this piece right here in the Art Deco gallery that I already had thrown out. And I think it works pretty good for this spot and it, it looks it looks like it's part of the, the column. And so I think we're gonna use this to kind of complete our little archways. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Now I just wanna kind of fill in this area with something that will look cool. Okay, so I found this cool piece in the art deco galleries and I think this fits well enough for our purposes here. Okay, so here we have our template wall. I think that's pretty cool. And now we're gonna make this into a, a custom object. And the way you make a custom object is you go into your phone and you start copying all of the pieces you want to make in your um, in your custom object. I think we've got all of the walls copied here. And then you're gonna see this bar right here behind me. And I'm gonna put this in the slot holder number two. Let's see, let's move there. So my number one's already full. I'm gonna show you what that object is in just a second. And then my number two is going to be this wall. And I'm gonna just hold two. And that is now part of right here behind my mic. That is the my template wall that I can use wherever I want. All right, now let me show you what I did for my turret. So I, I went through a lot of different options. I looked through the um, lighthouse prefabs, which were nice and round and really cool, but it looked a little too modern for me. It didn't really fit in with the, the walls that I have built. I wanted to use this red, you know, looking thing. So I built my own custom turret instead. One thing that was important to me was having a round top, and there's really only a couple of choices for round tops in creative mode. There's this new lighthouse one, there's one on the silo, and this one is the water tower top. And I felt like the water tower top looked good enough for what I wanted. And I used this water tower um, post to kind of fill in the gaps here, because see what happens when it's not there. There's a little bit of that, uh, you know, it just doesn't connect really well. So that was the piece I used to connect uh, the walls and then um, I, most of this is actually using um, custom props. All of these walls, like this, these walls I had to stretch a little bit on the diagonal part. Um, so they're all really just props um, that I have placed properly. Now when you're placing props, I, I like to use the grid snap eight is, is the best thing for me so that it's easy to place them, you know, one above the, the other and it kind of snaps a little bit so that it, it makes it look better. So I like to use that grid snap the most um, at eight. 
maybe four if I'm really uh, trying to get conservative, but eight usually seems to be all right for me. So I was debating whether or not to have an interior to this turret because I didn't want to use so much memory, uh, but I also didn't want to leave just blank, empty turrets. Uh, like if someone ran up to a window and looked in, it was just this empty building. And so what I decided to do instead of like putting a blackout over the windows or anything like that was to build an interior. Um, I have these stairs and I have this little walkway and it actually it takes less memory to have this interior than to have blackouts on that. And then also it gives me the option to use these in my gameplay like where you it makes it makes the map feel really huge if there's these turrets everywhere that you can go in and explore. And maybe I'll have like one where there's an actual gap in the floor that you can go find a secret or progress in the map or something like that. So this is what I decided to do with my turret and it turned out pretty well. Now we got to make this into our custom prop. Remember by uh, copying everything that you want to be at, in your custom uh, prop and then we're going to save it in our slot number one All right So I've been playing around a little bit with my turrets and my walls here and you can kind of see I've run into a couple of problems One is I had to make sure that my walkways were built So I kind of built those out along the way and then uh, my turret is a little short actually because the doorways go in You know this works really nicely um, but um, I, it's a little short, so I need to build it out a little bit deeper. Then I can place these throughout the, the exterior of my walls, and then I can start placing my walls kind of like I was doing here. I'm gonna have to delete all of this, um, but it, it kind of it helped me see what this is all gonna look like, and I think it's gonna look really cool once this is all placed. I also think I need to go place some greenery, like vines and stuff, coming off of the walls so that I don't have to go back later and place them around the entire castle. So I'm gonna make those updates and then I'm gonna show you the final product. Okay guys, now we're talking. I've got my first turret really placed with my walls and there's lots of greenery all around it so it makes it look like it's been here for a while. And now I can start you know, doing this all the way around the castle. Let's do this. Okay, so let me kind of explain what I'm doing here in placing these. So I actually took my grid snap off so that I could have more, I could have more control over how much it's curving um, as I go around. You can kind of see how it's looking so far. Honestly, guys, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Like this looks really cool and it feels really big like this just is gonna be a massive castle like I I'm hoping I have enough memory I'm already over halfway but I've got a ton of prefabs thrown down I think once I delete all those I'm gonna have a lot of extra memory well we'll see we'll see how this turns out but like I said I'm not using my grid snap um, on these and so there are some little th corrections I have to make when I get it off a little bit like I have to have that little stair there that kind of thing. But I'm not having the grid snap so that I can have more control over where I'm placing my pieces. I have to be a lot more careful though when I'm placing them. It's It makes it a lot more difficult to place. It's not like a simple just snap and go. But I have way more control over um, the direction it's going. So grid snap can be your best friend, but it can make it difficult to place things exactly where you want them. So I'm gonna keep working on this guys and hopefully in the next video I can show you the progress I've made. I want to try and get all of the walls done and most of the main castle done before we start the next video. But I really wanted to emphasize the custom objects that you can make that make uh, building so much easier and quicker. Like if I were placing all of this stuff individually, this would have taken me hours but uh, now it's only taken me, you know, a couple of hours as opposed to, you know, 20. But the bulk of that time was spent really making the templates, and now I can go build out the main part of the castle pretty quickly, whereas if I were doing that individually, it would take an eternity. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to watch the other videos in this series, click right here to see how we got to this point. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Otherwise, have an awesome day.